Well, it's so great to have Gerald Salente with us today. Gerald is CEO and founder of the Trends Research Institute. He's editor of its Trends Journal. He's famous for having called everything from the 87 crash to the subprime crisis. And uh, now he's talking about this Great Depression we're in. Gerald, you've said that by 2012, Americans are going to be more concerned about buying food than they will be about buying Christmas presents. Yeah, actually, that's even going to happen this year. We're going to see the first signs of it. We're going to have a Christmas crash. People have already stopped shopping. This is very serious, what's going on, and there's really no way out. I mean, we're looking at you know numbers coming out of unemployment. The real unemployment number, by the way, is about 12.5% when you add in people that are no longer on the government rolls, such as the unemployed who are no longer looking for jobs. And that's even according to the government the statistics. But they don't add those in when they give the official unemployment number, but their alternative unemployment shows those numbers. So we're looking at unemployment numbers that are going to up to about 25% to rival the Great Depression. And in many ways, this coming depression is going to be much worse because back then, uh, we didn't have, most people didn't own homes, so they weren't carrying insurance, uh, paying property taxes. There was no such thing as a home equity loan, and people didn't have credit cards. So they weren't burdened with over $14 trillion of debt. And back then, we had budget surpluses and trade surpluses. And now we have you know, major deficits in each, $700 billion a year trade, $11.5 trillion total uh, budget, and plus a trillion dollar coming online this year of a, another deficit. So they just keep print, printing more money and throwing it at these problems and not going to solve it. And back then, you know, when we did get out of the Great Depression, we had a manufacturing base. We rebuilt the world following World War II and armed the world during World War II. We no longer have that manufacturing base. So, yeah, people are going to be in very dire straits. All these people are getting fired, all these stores that are closing, Circuit City going bankrupt, KB Stores, Stephen Barry's, linens and things. We're seeing closing, Starbucks, Office Depot the other day announced 122 stores. Number one, where are these people that have been fired where or laid off? Where are they going to find jobs? And number two, who's going to take all these vacant retail spaces and commercial spaces that are, that are um, going to be left empty? The answer to both of those questions is nobody. Nobody's going to find jobs and nobody's going to fill the spaces. So we're looking at a meltdown, a catastrophe, the likes of which no one has ever seen before. And, of course, we've had President Bush, who's our current Herbert Hoover, and now we have Obama, who would like to be the next FDR, but we're starting from a base of a much more massive and interventionist government, far beyond anything that existed in the days of Hoover and Roosevelt. Do you think that they're actually capable of preventing a recovery even some years from now? Yeah, there's nothing that they can do. We call it the Bernanke two-step. The, the Federal Reserve chairman's only two measures are to adjust interest rates or print more money, you know, and, and we hear, oh, and we're political atheists. We don't believe in fairy tales or these, these little political games. I've been around too long. I worked in government, ran mayoral campaign in Yonkers at the age of 23 out of graduate school. That would educate you. Oh, yeah. I was also the, uh, the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. It was the worst job I ever had to watch grown men grovel is a disgusting spectacle, and that's all they do. Uh, when you're in government, that's how people get to the top. They suck their way up to the top. And when they're big enough, as they're bringing back all these failures from the Clinton administration, they fail their way to the top. So here we are. What, obviously, from my libertarian standpoint, and I'm, I'm not a fan of elective politics either, you know, if, if the, we were in an ideal world, they'd stop the money printing, they'd cut the government's budget massively, they'd cut taxes, they'd cut regulations, they'd bring the troops home, and, but obviously they're not going to do those things. Was it a good sign that the, that the Senate wouldn't bail out the automobile companies, at least for the time being? Well, you know, it's a, even, even a $15 billion bailout, you know, it was worthless, it would be just throwing good money after bad. But there's really, again, these are minor steps. They're not going to do anything. Well, I love the language they use. They're going to bring in a car czar. I mean, what childish talk. And, you know, it's like they bring in a drug czar. And it isn't, isn't the language just uh, wonderful that uh, they, they keep referring a czar? I mean, my God, this is America. We don't need czars here. Yeah, well, we've got czars. We've got an empire. We've got a government. 
I guess, the biggest, richest, most powerful government in the history of the world, the U.S. government. And now they've put us into this mess, the Federal Reserve, the banks, the Treasury, all the rest of the gang in Washington. What should the individual do? I mean, what sort of advice would you give the individual people listening to this podcast? What what ought they to be thinking about? Well, what, what I would suggest they do is they don't spend a dime that they don't have and also realize that, that their dollar might be worth dimes in the coming years because they're creating a situation for hyperinflation. So we're looking at gold to go to probably $2,000 an ounce. And the dollar plummeting? Yeah, if they keep printing money, you're creating hyperinflation. So you have deflation of product commodities, but you have inflationary pressures on, on worthless currencies. They did it in the Weimar Republic. They're doing it in Zimbabwe, and they're going to do it again. Because that's Obama's only solution, is to create 2.5 million jobs by creating job work projects. So just printing more money, it's not going to solve anything. Well, you're certainly right that there's never been anything like this in the history of the world. What apparently we'll, we'll end up with is, a, at least in the industrial world, a global hyperinflationary depression. That's right, that's right. And it's a global meltdown. And they're looking for Obama to be the next FDR. This isn't 1930s. It's a whole different world. And maybe he will follow FDR's footsteps in calling for a bank holiday shortly after he's elected. And that means you won't be able to get your money out of the bank. I love the language, holiday, <laughs> holiday. You know, it's, uh, but they'll let you take it out. They'll say that, um, uh, you know, it's insured. Don't worry about it. You just can't get it out all at one time. I mean, do you think in the, in the thirties, we were still on a gold standard, and uh, so that, that put some, at least even under FDR, there was some restriction on what they could do monetarily. But now there's no restriction. The monetary policy entirely discretionary. That's right. And, and not only is there no restriction, the Federal Reserve has now taken over the Treasury Department. They just put their boy Geithner in there under FDR Obama, and he, of course, is the president of the New York Federal Reserve Bank. And the people that have caused the problem are now running the show. And in reality, Washington has been hijacked by Wall Street. Wall Street's running Washington. Washington's not running Washington. Of course, the government's always been responsive to special interest. I mean, all these regulatory agencies, whether it's the SEC or the Federal Reserve itself, were created in response to private interests. Big banks got the government to create the Federal Reserve System for them. So now they're, they're reaping their rewards and they're killing the rest of us, however. That's exactly what's going on. It's a, it's a, the too big to, the too big to fail are being saved and the too small to save are being drowned. It's kind of like the Titanic. The too rich to drown were given the lifeboats and the too small to save were locked into steerage. <laughs>